this morning. I see God applying situations to your issues this morning. How I love calling your name, Jesus. this morning. I am happy I'm part of this this morning. How I love calling your name. Every day <laughs> your name is the same. Hallelujah. The name that the dead heard and rise up. The name that a deaf man hears and he can hear again. The name that the blind man hears and he receives his sight. How Make your praises real today. Make your praises real. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We adore you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That was a wonderful ministration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us bow our head in prayer. Righteous Father, we worship you this morning. Oh, we thank you that this far you have brought us, oh God. We thank you that for your presence in our midst, oh God. We thank you because you have taken your place already. We thank you that you are, are doing what no one else can do in our midst. Presently, you are doing what you alone can do. Father, we appreciate you. We appreciate your majesty. We acknowledge your presence, O oh God. Father, as we are going into your word, Father, go with us, O oh Lord. Amen. Give us the wisdom and understanding, O oh Lord. Teach us, O oh Lord, your way, O oh God. Father, in, in this message, O oh God, break yokes, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Deliver, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that your presence is liberty, O oh God. Father, set the captives free here today, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, all the glory shall be ascribed unto your name, O oh God. Amen. Father, as I open my mouth this morning, speak through me, O oh God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I come against every flesh Amen. in our midst this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. and I declare this environment, O oh God, sanctify for you, O oh God. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Spirit, Amen. in Jesus Wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have you been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Evangelist Mustafa, I want to appreciate you for that song. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's be the name of the Lord. And uh, thank you, Jesus. I, feel, I, I can feel the presence of the Lord in here this morning. Amen. 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 Ooh. And I also want to appreciate the presence of my wife uh, uh, in our midst also. That's the tie on my neck. And I want to stop getting receiving tickets. <laughs> Even though you see call out, there's tie underneath. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I had a message that I ha I was I have prepared already. And that was the Bible reading that was Put, printed in the program. But the Holy Spirit ministered to me and changed it. Amen. So last night I called Daddy and sent a new message, a, a new a Bible reading, but it was too late. But the Holy Spirit inspired me to put this message together. And he says there is a, a message in your mess. Amen. 
Mm. Amen. Amen. There's a message in your mess. For the sake of some of us who are in a mess right now, and you are wondering, how did I get into this mess? And why me? Most of the time we question God, why me? Amen? Amen. You don't know how you get into that mess, but you all of a sudden find yourself in a mess. That's hmm. right. You can't even explain it. But you are in a mess. Amen? Amen. Just like when Jacob, Jacob's mama trying to take a shortcut and receive the blessing that supposed to go to a brother. So Jacob, Jacob thought it was fun. He prepared the, fa the food. He, he was dressed fake. But all of a sudden, he found himself in a... Nice. I can't hear your voice. Nice. I'd like you all to be present with me in the church today. Anybody awake there? Show your hand. Anybody awake? Yes, Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jacob found himself in a mess. Amen? Amen. Mephibosheth was just a child. He did not, he never committed any sin. He found himself in a mess. Because something happened. His grandfather and his father got involved in a mess. And draw him in it. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. There is a message in your mess. Only for the people that are in the mess this morning, I have a news for you. I don't know what kind of mess you are going through. Maritally, financially, business wise, extended family issue, neighborhood. Do you know you can live in a, in a neighborhood that have a terrible, terrible, terrible neighbor? Back in Chicago, I used to, I bought a house behind, beside this Navy man who thought he was saving the whole world. And because his uncle had been in Nigeria before and they subdued some people in Nigeria, he think because this one is in Nigeria beside me, I can ride him. And in my kindness, when I, when I mow my lawn, I will mow his lawn as well. Because he's never around. On this glorious day, he came not knocking, but hitting my door. And I had people, friends, colleagues in my house. Among them were lawyers. Among them were doctors. And he came hitting my door. My lawyer friend would not let me speak. And we opened the door and this man said, excuse me, listen, I don't mind you mowing my law, but... Don't mow it too low. I didn't hear any thank you. I found myself in a mess. <laughs> mess that I thought I was doing good to somebody. Amen? Amen? But before you know, God took the mouth of my lawyer friend. And she was a white. And this Navy also was a white. I just fold my arm. He said, excuse me, sir. Who the H-E-L-L -L are you? And how in the world can you come and knock somebody's house door like that? I see if it belongs. Believe me, it was a serious fight. His mouth became dumb. His wife had to come and pull him from my door. It wasn't a joke. Sometimes like this, all you want to do is help. And you found yourself in a mess. In the passage that we read, in the, I, 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 and I want to thank my wife for reading that passage. I almost catch the Holy Spirit even listening to that reading. Hello, somebody. <laughs> there was a gentleman that was blind. And the, Jesus was passing by and the disciple asked him, what happened to this man? Is he is sin? Or his parents sin? Isn't the same question we ask sometimes? Right. I like to bring the word of God into reality. That's right. Let's be real. Okay. We see somebody coming. This is the way it works. The first thing that can run through your mind is, oh, this man must be a sinner. This man must be a sinner. How did he look like this? Yes, but when they asked Jesus, Jesus said, this man did not commit any sin. Right, right. Neither 
Did the spirit commit any sin? But whatever is going on in his life is that God's name may be glorified. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to go in details, in details on that passage. We heard the reason. But listen to me. Is your past casting you, catching up with you? And when it catch up with you, it don't just catch up with you, it's trying to cast you down. That's right. Confused. Is your past catching up with you? I remember back in the days in the school, there is not a single high school classmate that don't know me or remember my name. I don't remember most of their names, but they see me. As soon as they see my picture on the Facebook, ah, baby, man. ah, baby. I was the social prefect in the school. And I was a very disciplinarian person. They know me. If we say you must wear brown shoe, you come to school with black, I'm seizing that shoe. And we're going to put it on the flea. We're going to sell it. Amen? 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 Amen. You come to school with a, we're supposed to wear a green sweater, you come with black, you're going to lose your sweater. And that is the way I was. To the core. It's your part, you know, in those times, I may have offended some people. <laughs> you know that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me say me. <laughs> you know, I just want to make the sample light. You understand what I'm saying? I may have hit some people the wrong way, and on the other hand, I may have touched the hearts of some other people. Some people will learn discipline lesson. Some will learn wicked lesson. That man is a wicked. You understand? Mess. What I'm trying to say here is mess is inevitable. The next step you take, you don't know where you're going to put it. It might be in a mess. Amen? Amen. Well, look at this man. Mess comes in three categories. The one that you put yourself in. The one that God put on you for his glory. The one that people put on you. You know people will put you in a mess if care is not taken. Mm -hmm. I was renting an apartment in Chicago years back. As I, I moved into that apartment, the first person I met was a Nigerian man by the, by the elevator. He greeted me so good, they called his name Clinton. He greeted me so well and he invited me to his birthday party the following weekend. And I dressed up, just a few doors from my apartment. And I walked into his apartment and I sat down, the Holy Spirit said, no, get out of here. Now, it's left to me to, to find the way to derive a method to get out of there. Because I just came. So, my leg was shaking. I was not at peace. I said, I want to go and take something in my apartment. I'll be right back. The time that I left to the time I came back was not five minutes. And I found about 20 police officers. Everyone in that place was already handcuffed. And somebody snitched on the, the guy that invited me. He was selling drugs. Hmm. Look at the mess that I could have found myself in. How would I have explained it? How would you prove yourself? You know you're clean, but you're now in a mess. There are things that I want us to understand when it comes to mess, in regards to mess. Number one, the enemies may use our, our past to cause confusion and disorder in our lives. That's right. Number two, he is the record keeper of our past. You have to know that. If you know all these things and put it in the corner of your mind, when you find yourself in the mess, you will know the right step to take. Number three, it torments us with feelings of shame, guilt, condemnation, and a host of other seriously, awfully, Awful feelings. Amen? Amen. The enemy, he loves to remind us of things we have done in the past to keep us from feeling deserving of God's love and grace. Ah. Shame on the Lord, church, What would God think about me? <laughs> and you know, 
Seriously? So many people are in this dilemma right now. Right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even things we may not have control, any control over. Things that just happen. Enemy will come and place it before you. And before you know, it will anchor you again with that issue. And you'll be feeling condemned. Amen? Amen. One day the enemy reminded me of every awful things I had done since I was like 15 years old. And there were several of them. And because of this, that guilt kept me from sleeping and stepping food inside, food inside church for a very long time. So when I'm saying some people right now might be going through that, I'm a living witness. So many things God has put me through in my life just so I can know what to tell others. Tell, talk about it. Homelessness, sleeping on the, on the road, sleeping in the shelter. I've been through it in this country, in Italy. I've been through it. Serious. There were times that I will all my food for three years. Is semolina that's been prepared and put in the fridge and became solid rock. I would buy semolina and buy a bottle of tomato. They, they are the spaghetti pasta. That's what I eat raw. Semolina will break in your hand like a tool. I will squeeze it up together and eat it. For three years. So if you're in America, you're not homeless. Nothing's going on with you. You're an opportunist. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Italians will not give us house. They call you, they look at you, Negro, come here. How, how come your skin is so dirty? When was the last time you took shower? One day, I was sleeping in the garden and then and the, and the rain began. And so I took my comforter and went and hide in the corner of a train station. Early in the morning, this young man was coming and he just hid at that thing and started easing himself on me. I shed a very hard tear to the Lord. 1986, that was the first green card they give them in Italy. I did not miss that year. You meet yourself in the night. You see people, you can't tell my story. That's right. You don't know me. That's right. You can't tell my story. Don't talk bad about people. Okay. That's a topic for another time. Amen. That's a topic for another time. Amen. 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 Mess is a four letter word. And has a very powerful significance and interprets a lot. What is a mess? According to the dictionary, a mess is a dirt or untidy state of things or a place. Number two, a mess is a situation or state of affairs that is confused or full of difficulties. You will find several words that interpret a mess. Words like plight is in a mess. Predicament is in a mess. Difficulty is in a mess. Straight, trouble, quandary, dilemma, problems is in a mess. Muddled, mixed up confusion, complication, entanglement is in a mess. Something that is disorganized or disorder without form. Hmm. You don't have any, you can't give a shape to it. You don't have any reason why. You just can't explain why. Amen. Amen. Some of us that have teenagers at home can explain what a mess looks like when you take a peep at their room. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Come ask me about it. I'll tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> In the book of Psalm, there were several passages speaks about the goodness of God. There are good mess and there are bad mess. Can you repeat that to me? There are good mess and there are bad mess. Amen. What does good mess do? Number one, good mess will serve as a step to a greater height. Amen. Amen. Good mess will lead you back home to Christ. Good mess, you can see through the eyes of God in a good mess. Good mess will parachute you into a supernatural abundance. That's a good mess. Man will mean it for evil, but God will use it for good. Yeah. Joseph was in a good mess. He didn't do anything wrong, 
But he just found himself like his brothers now become enemies and they gang up on him. And, and he kept going one step and another. Before you know he's in the jail. Before you know he's back in jail. Before you know he's called out of jail. Hallelujah. Daniel was also in a mess. In a good mess. This man didn't do anything. But God wants to glorify himself in his life. Because of Daniel, the king declares that the God of Daniel is the true God. That everyone must worship. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we don't think that God is not being good to us. Sometimes when we're going through this mess, we question God why. I learned a lesson throughout my life. And when I find myself in a mess now, what I do is Lord, Because I find out you can pay attention to the noise of the mess and miss the message in the mess. That's right. That's right. For the Bible says that everything works together for the good of those that are called, yes. those that love the Lord. Yes. So and God promised he will not put on you more than you can be and somebody bear me witness here. Yeah. Yeah. It won't put on you more than you can. You if God can. let anything come your way, you'll be prepared to withstand it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Preach, Reverend. Preach it. We question God why? Why me? Why not you? Mm. You is child, ain't you? <laughs> and he's trying to glorify himself in your situation. <laughs> so that must be you. We question God. Why me, Lord? Why? Who did I offend? Mm -hmm. Must you offend somebody to find yourself in a mess? What did I do? We question. We ask why? Because of what God is doing in our lives. Ooh. I've done everything that I, can, I need to do by the book, oh Lord, and nothing changed. And then before you know your cry, it gets frustrating when the non-believers now begin to tell you about your situation. Yes, sir. And you know, they, they, they grow wings when they find that kind of thing to talk yes, about. Sir. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I'm going somewhere. Many a times we have dragged God in the mud before the unbelievers. But you forgot that some of the mess we found ourselves in is only meant for God to glorify himself in our life. Uh, I need to get a bigger hallelujah than that. Hallelujah. Some of the mess we found ourselves it's because God wants to take you to another level. Some of the fun that you find yourself is just one step for you to go higher. Higher. And you look at it like, and you begin to complain. You begin to ask God why. I wish God will open your inner eyes to just see that after you come over this, after this, this, this storm is over, there will be a light for you. I don't hear no amen. Amen. If God will open your eyes to see that after I, I, I overcome this battle, blessings, miracles are awaiting me. Back in the days, I used to go hiking in, in Italy. And we go over the mountains to Austria. And when we're going to for hiking, we always pack a, a bag some of us know some backpack that kids put in their bag to go to school. Right. There are backpacks and there are also backpacks. You will put knife, macheries, cutlasses, bottle of water. You will load it and put it on your shoulder. And the shoe we wear has steel under. Because when you hit the wall, that nail must be able to hook on something for you to climb. What happened there is it is very painful. It causes pain on your lower back when you carry that backpack. And the walking is distressful. But the thing is, 
when you give up or quit on the climbing, you're not only going to miss the joy of finishing the climbing, you are also going to miss the people that are gathering on the other end of the mountain to celebrate you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. We look at the mess that we find ourselves as if we are too good to I don't even have a word to qualify our behavior. We are too good, too beautiful for God to, to, to punish or to try or to, to prove. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. When you read that passage, Romans 8, 28, and go down to verse 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? I saw some video clips. This uh, uh, the Laden people, what's the name again? The Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, they put a knife on this lady's throat and said, deny Jesus. Deny Jesus. If you deny Jesus, we will save you. The woman insisted she will not deny Jesus. They went to the husband, put a knife on, her, on, his, on his neck and said, deny Jesus. Immediately he said, ah, lie, 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 deny Jesus. He said, listen, 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 and they killed him in the face of his wife. The woman keep crying. Is this to me? He rescued me from cancer. He delivered me from there. I cannot deny him. And they saved her. And they saved her. Behold, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Shall they so take you away from Jesus? What then do we do when you find yourself in a mess? The Bible has showed us in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. Do we get that passage? Yes. Amen? Amen. Remember, no matter what your bondage, surrendering to Jesus Christ is the pathway to freedom. Amen. Some of us don't know how to give it up to Jesus. There's a song, American song they used to sing, take your, take your problem to the Lord and leave it there. Take your, to the Lord. take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Some of us, as we take the problem to the Lord, We'll take it. The same way we take it back home. <laughs> I reject that hope. <laughs> it will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. You should be able to take your problems to the Lord and just leave it there. Forget it. Let it be. Begin to live a new life. Believing that all things are now normal. Amen. Amen. What step do you need to take today to move from bondage to freedom? Reflect with gratitude on how God has turned your mess into a message. Hallelujah. That way you can encourage others also and that can bring more life to Jesus. Amen? Amen. You can write your story down about how you surrender your life to Jesus. About how you gave your problem to the Lord. You can write it down. Luke 19.10 says, for the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which was lost. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. So why won't you why won't you surrender your, your mess to Jesus? Amen? Amen. Amen. Bringing it to a close, let's look quickly at five steps to remain in freedom. Because some people is wanting to surrender your mess to Christ and retain, remain free. It's another, another thing to surrender your, your, your issues to Christ and still go back there and be wondering God why again. 
The word of God says affliction will not rise the second time. In your life, I decree today in the powerful name of Jesus that which you have been through that has caused you to cry and has caused you pain will not come back and start again in your life. Amen. In the, affliction will not arise in your life again in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is what the word of God says. Amen? Amen. Number one, be in the word every day. Back in the days when I was a young man, we used to sing the song, and I believe most of us know this song in the church. Read your Bible. Pray, pray every day. day. <laughs> pray, every pray every day. Only God knows how many generations have said that song. <laughs> if you want to grow, amen. Read your Bible every day. The Word of God equips us with what we need to live victoriously. Putting on the full armor of God, Ephesians 6 said, empower us to fight not with flesh and blood, but with the evil forces that wraps us in the spiritual bondages. Jesus spoke the word of God in truth when the enemy brought temptation and was victorious. He spoke. He put the devil in his place. Amen? Amen. So when the word of God, when the word of truth is coming into us daily, it becomes easy to recall. Some of us we don't know how to. The problem we have is the application of the word of God. It doesn't mean that we don't know the word. Oh. Look at me now. I'm driving on the road. All of a sudden, one crackhead cut me off and slapped on his face. What, what will come out of your mouth first? <laughs> oh. I'm touching, I'm touching some conscience, right, mommy? God bless you. <laughs> Do you shout the name Jesus first? Or you shout Jesus the other way. <laughs> Hello? It is not that we don't know the word. But when we find ourselves in a mess, we forget the application of the word. Right. Some of us, that's when they become a pure American and begin to speak vulgar languages. Begin to speak in tongue. Y'all know what I mean. Hallelujah! <laughs> When you're supposed to lift up your eyes towards heaven and begin to decree. Yes, Jesus said it is written. Yes. You must worship your Lord alone. That shall not bow down to any yes, other God. That's right. Okay, he spoke. Yes, I rebuke you, Satan. You. When you feel that coming your way, you should be able to. Yes. He cut you off to mess your day up. Right. And then Whatever you, you pick up right there, that might be the way you're going to live your whole day. It's so obvious. Uh, some people in Nigeria say when you wake up, the first person you see, <laughs> it means your day. Eh? Somebody will say, ah, I need to go back to sleep. <laughs> sleep that sleep over again. Lord, have mercy on us. <laughs> Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your, your is a lamp. Your lamp is the your lamp is the light to my, to my heart. Amen. 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 Sometimes when I'm writing my message on my phone, I fall asleep and I start touching things. And then <laughs> and then it kind of like messing. So I have to read my message over and over. Before I can minister, I have to minister to myself. Amen. 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 If you don't feel the presence of the Lord in what you're ministering, you need to check yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Number two, live a life of repentance. Yes. Repentance means to turn away from your own path and turn back to God. Amen. 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 Every day we are pulled by temptations. It's even too much in America. Too much distractions. I told somebody, look, in this country, you want to become a fornicator? You will become a fornicator with your own self-licensed, self-certified. You want to become a drug dealer? Just look for one drug dealer friend. You become a professional to the core. It's too much distraction. Now, 
You can't even speak the word of God in the public because of political, politically correctness or whatever. Too much distraction. You travel from Nigeria over here, you are on fire for the Lord. But when you come here, the law of the land will quench the fire if care is not taken. And I said to some people, I said, you know what? Back in the days, our forefathers sold their children on slave. But now, is the great God not the rope they set up that we children put our neck by ourselves? Put your neck in it and come back here. Come and enslave yourself. I appreciate God for this land. Don't get me wrong. Many of God have made good things. But many of us are in a mess. And I mean deep mess. There are people who can never go home again. Because of a small mess. Amen. Amen. Take your trouble to the Lord. I have seen somebody who cannot have a child for many years. But when they fully committed it to God, God bless them with children. Amen. There is nothing God cannot do. Number three, find forgiveness. That's another thing, very important. Find forgiveness. If there is unforgiveness in your heart, this is a foretold the devil has within your soul. If you cannot forgive, somebody did something wrong to you. Un unforgiveness that is withheld for so long automatically turns to bitterness. Amen? Amen. When you have a bitterness, you, you are a great sinner before God. Amen. You, mean, you don't have to be a thief. You don't have to be a fornicator. You don't have to be a killer. Just with unforgiveness. Amen? Amen. Try to forgive. Clear your mind. Mark 11, 25 says, And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. That's right. Amen? Amen. Number four. Pray without season. If you want freedom from spiritual bondages, Praying must become part of it. You know the devil will put you on a stop, one-stop prayer. One-stop prayer, what that means? You just pray one time and you, that's it. Because he knows that when you constantly pray, when you continuously pray, you're going to get him. You will lock him down. Amen? Amen. Amen? amen. Is somebody sleeping on me this morning? Amen. Can I have an amen in the house? Amen. Hallelujah. He also know that if we pray once or twice and give up, then it's closer to bring you down. So keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Matthew 7, 7 to 8 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. For anyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knock, it will be open. Amen. Amen. Your answers will be, your prayers will be answered in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number five, hear and do the word. Don't be the hearer alone, but also be the doer, the doer of the word. It is one thing to hear the word of God, but another to activate it. Just like the example I gave, driving. And somebody cuts you off. That's just a very common one. Who knows what we do at our own working days? There are some people you have to know that there are some people that the enemy has given an assignment to to be a pain. And there is no way they go through their day but to be a pain to somebody. You don't, you don't fetch them, they will fetch, fetch you. You don't look for them, they will look for you. They will put something on your desk, put something in the kitchen, put something by the microwave just to get at you. The enemy has committed that assignment unto them. All they need to do is to be a pain. And, that, and Jesus already foretold us, in this world, if you remember that passage, you will face tribulations. But be of good courage because I have overcome. I have overcome. But take note, just because he said I have overcome does not mean you will not go through. <laughs> it just simply means your going through is made easy. Right. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Your going through is made easy. 
Amen? Amen. So when you come through a human being that I call, quote unquote, pain, just apply the word of God. Go through it. There was a song that Ron, Ron can only say, say, if you catch Back hell, down, don't hold it. Don't hold it. If you're going, if through, you're going through hell, don't stop. Don't, keep moving. Don't stop. If you catch hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Go on. So when you come across these people that are subtitled pain, just keep going. Keep going. The best medicine for ignorance, you want to know it, is to ignore them. When you ignore an ignorant, it pains them more than when you respond. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. <laughs> renounce the world completely. Because renouncing is refusing to align yourself with the enemy by formally declaring that you will no longer walk in your past or bound in sin. James 4, 3 says, you ask and do not receive because you ask and miss. So be specific. Amen? Amen. Amen. By doing these things, you and I will allow God to turn our message, our mess, into a message. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. They will no longer change us, but also use our message to change the people around us. Rise up on your feet this morning. Have you been blessed? Amen. Put your hands together to Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. There's a message in your mess. So when you're going through mess, don't pay attention to the mess. Focus. Because in every mess, he says all things work together. For good. So you must know in every mess that comes your way, there is a message. Don't keep your focus on the mess and lose the focus on the the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to pray. Oh Lord, I want you to surprise me with your mercy. In the name of Jesus. It is mercy that you receive when you're in a mess to overcome that mess. Lord, surprise me with your mercy. Turn into prayer, everybody. Father, Father in the name of Jesus. Surprise me, oh Lord, with your mercy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray. Give me opportunities to speak of your hope. So others can experience your goodness and salvation. In Jesus' name, begin to pray. Father, give me the opp opportunity, O oh Lord, to express your goodness, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, give me the opportunity, O oh God. Give me the opportunity, O oh Lord, to speak of your hope, Daddy. So that others may experience your goodness, O oh God. Give me the opportunity to speak of your hope, O oh Lord. That others may draw near to you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, give me the opportunity, O oh God. Give me the opportunity in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. The last prayer. Use me, O oh Lord, to draw others to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, hold on, hold on. Before you pray that prayer. Some of us, it is our behavior that is chasing people away from God. Our life does not even speak of God. And when they see you, they want to see God in you. I will let you my dash around it all now. You come to me, you say you're going to buy me a gold issue. I want to see what you're wearing. Is it gold or silver? Lord, use me, Lord, to draw others to you. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus.